Hey, this is Matt. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be comparing Brizula 5% versus Minoxidil 5% and which one of these two is more likely to kick the other one's ass. This video is brought to you by GoFiber Hair Building Fibers. Pick up your free sample and get instant hair confidence. Start your transformation today. Hey, welcome back once again. This is Matt and you're watching my hair loss and hair transplant related channel where it's all about stopping our hair loss, getting our hair back and hair transplant. And even if in this video we're going to be talking about hair loss treatments like minoxidil and brizula, it's also the field of hair restoration, which many of you guys are interested in. So for all you guys who are interested in uh, getting a hair transplant the proper way in 2021, two things. Make sure you first join my Facebook group group hair transplant experiences with over 1500 members in it it's for free and also check out my website mattdominance.com where you can get my free ebook five things i wished i had known before my hair transplant which can help you out with your hair transplant research joining the group reading my ebook will help you increase the likelihood of getting a successful hair transplant in 2021. So very important, do that. And now let's talk about minoxidil 5% versus brizula 5%. Now let's talk about minoxidil 5% versus brizula 5%. The results of both of them will complement. Okay, so if you use them together, no matter which one is stronger or weaker, you will get a superior result in terms of uh, hair regrowth. So that's good thing for the start. In one of their first trials on Brizula, they actually compared Brizula 5%, Minoxidil 5% and vehicle. In each of these three groups, there were 30 subjects. So study on 90 or 95 subjects. They were applying uh, Minoxidil 5% and Brizula 5% uh, on a one square centimeter area on the scalp and uh, they were measuring target area hair count that means how many new hairs will sprout in a given time period and the given time period was six months in this case we can see 12.7 percent improvement in target area hair count in brizula five percent group after six months and 18.8% uh, improvement in minoxidil 5% group after six months. So it clearly seems that minoxidil 5% worked better in this scenario. Now, what did Cassiopeia say about that? They said that it is also known that minoxidil has its efficacy peak at four months. So the data were as expected. They were like, yeah, if our study would have continued for like 12 months, then the minoxidil hair regrowth would have not been that good anymore. And uh, on the contrary, the efficacy of Brizua 5% would have gone up even further. Now, this has to be obviously proven first. Based on this very little study, 90 subjects only, we have to say that the hair regrowth ability of minoxidil 5% is higher compared to brizula 5%. Can it be that brizula 7.5% has a comparable hair regrowth of 15 to even 20%? Yes, it's possible. In fact, it has been shown by the six month mark uh, of uh, using 7.5% brizula twice a day. It was 20%. Cassiopeia is claiming that minoxidil kind of uh, peaks at four month mark. And on the other hand, like brizula peaks at 12 month mark or even further than that. This is only an assumption and it has to be proven first. In this study, they have been observing uh, minoxidil use uh, for five years in 30 subjects and it was only 2% and 3% minoxidil but they found out that the peak hair regrowth has been observed after one year not after four months. Based on the assumption what Cassiopeia told about Brizula 5% uh, that it will likely have the best efficacy uh, at the 12 month mark, they did the trial number two, the dose ranging trial, where they compared the six month efficacy of different Brizula concentrations to 12 month efficacy. And the only concentration which was more efficacious at the 12 month mark compared to the six month mark was in fact the 5% and the 7.5% applied once a day. Funny enough, 
the 7.5% Brizula applied twice a day decreased in terms of efficacy between the 6 and 12 month. By the 6 month, the efficacy of the 7.5% Brizula applied twice a day was 20.7% improvement in target area hair count, and in 12 months, it was only 14.3. Okay, that means that it decreased actually. Now, what this tells us, guys, is that even the Brizula's efficacy peak may not be at the 12 month mark, but it may be also 6 month mark, as it was the case with the Brizula 7.5% solution and also the 2.5% solution. So here we would obviously need another study which would compare the 7.5% Brizula, for example, to 5% minoxidil and maybe even to finasteride one milligram for at least one year while assessing the progress after six months, 12 months, and maybe 18 months. Uh, because what we want, we want to have something that works relatively fast, okay, and sustains its efficacy for as long as possible, okay? What we can tell here is that uh, both a Brizula 5% and Minoxidil 5% likely peak between the 6th and 12th month mark. When it comes down to price and ease of application, uh, obviously the point will go to Minoxidil because Minoxidil is cheap and even if you apply more than one milliliter more of Minoxidil solution on your scalp, it won't usually hurt you and neither it will hurt your wallet because it costs like what, 10 to $20 per monthly supply, it's generic and you can buy it from dozens and dozens of suppliers nowadays. Brizua on the other hand is not as cheap uh, because uh, Cassiopeia still holds the, the patents for it. Uh, in the European Union it's until 2028 and in the United States it's until 20, uh, 2030, 2030. So until then the price is expected to be rather high. The monthly supply is, is estimated at somewhere around $100 per month and if you are a diffuse thinner you'll probably need to use um, more than two milliliters of, uh, of solution, of CB0301 solution, probably even four milliliters if you apply on the front, mid scalp and crown. If you are like a diffusely thin Norwood 5 or so, or Norwood 6, you will need more. I hope they will at least make this uh, product more liquidy and not as like gel, which would be like very thick. The one I used, it was topical finasteride liposomal gel. It was rather, rather thick in consistency, which made it very hard to kind of spread it like over the whole you know over a large surface on your scalp and that's why I think if it's something more liquidy not as liquidy as the Kirkland minoxidil but something between that and between the liposomal you know very thick gel because if you use two three four milliliters of this Brizula on a regular basis you will run out of the supply very fast. As far as side effects uh, minoxidil's potential side effects are uh, no Known to most of you guys, but I'm just going to summarize them based on one big uh, meta analysis on minoxidil. We obviously have this uh, hypertrichosis, which is um, facial growth, additional body uh, hair growth, which occurs with minoxidil. Not a big issue for men, a uh, bigger issue for women, obviously. We have hair shedding, which is uh, not really a side effect of minoxidil. It's something that is to be expected. That's the shock loss, where minoxidil gets rid of these uh, very thin uh, velous hairs and kind of uh, tries to reset their hair growth cycle and then uh, makes them come stronger uh, and thicker during the next cycle. So that's really not a big side effect. Uh, we have headaches, also palpitation and tachycardia by patients with uh, blood pressure problems, but these are very small percentages of patients that have these side effects from minoxidil. Also ear swelling, a mild itching and burning on the scalp, a dry scalp, these are also the side effects uh, of uh, using minoxidil. Now, the good news is that there are likely no hormonal side effects of Brizula because uh, the metabolite of Brizula, cortexolone, uh, is, has been shown to be pretty harmless and uh, didn't show to, you know, decrease testosterone or DHT or do anything with your hormones, which is very good and positive. But if we take a look at the Brizula 1%, it's not Brizula 1%, but it's the CB0301 1% solution. Vin Levy cream uh, for treating 
acne, which already got FDA approved. This 1% CB could cause like local skin irritation, including itching, burning, skin redness, or peeling, scaling, or dryness. If this 1% CB0301 solution can come with some side effects, it's obvious that uh, even the potentially 5% or 7.5% brizola could come with similar uh, side effects or side effect potential. Okay, it will be probably very low percentage, but it means that they can come some side effects. Also depends on what type of vehicle will be used for brizula. Will it be something mild or will it be something which tends to irritate the scalp? Uh, like, uh, you know, the propylene glycol uh, has been shown in minoxidil solutions. And that's why some guys who switched to propylene glycol free solutions with just minoxidil and uh, some alcohol, uh, you know, have like decreased uh, likelihood of you know skin irritations skin dryness and uh, and stuff like that itching as well to conclude this side effect profile i would say that brizula will have a milder side effect profile while minoxidil has a bit higher side effect profile but in terms of you know hair regrowth ability and uh, the peak hair growth minoxidil versus brizula they seem to be pretty pretty similar so far uh, we still cannot tell for sure when the efficacy of one or the other peaks. We would probably need a trial that would be observing minoxidil uh, versus brizula for 6, 12, 18 months. And then we could see like different, uh, you know, target area hair count uh, changes from every half year. And that would be very interesting study where we could better assess which one is actually better. Uh, so far, it seems like they are pretty similar uh, short-term minoxidil seems to be better and produce better hair growth in terms of hair thickness however it's something that we cannot tell as as good because there is no study that would be comparing target area hair width um, on minoxidil versus brizula all right guys so uh, that was it for this video hope you enjoyed it um, Alright guys, so that was it for this video. I hope this was an interesting comparison for you and uh, I'm going to see you in the next video.